Lucy, guess what? I got the part. Oh, Joyce, how <laughs> wonderful. You got the part, you got the part. Oh, what part? The lead in that police show pilot, Undercover Woman. <gasps> oh, terrific. Oh, if the pilot sells, you'll have a steady job. Oh, right. Wouldn't it be great? No more auditions, no more interviews. No more advances from lecherous producers. Yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> but the best part is I'd have security. A weekly paycheck. I won't be dependent upon alimony checks from old Pickle Puss. Oh, that's what I wanted to tell you. What? Old Pickle Puss is on the patio. John? John is here? Well, I better get him in from the patio before he attracts bats. Come on inside, John. Hello, Joyce. Well, it's nice to see you again, John. How long has it been? Exactly 26 alimony checks. <laughs> Same old John. I see you still have your mustache. Or did you have anchovies for lunch? Uh, listen, Joyce, I'm sorry about the alimony crack. I didn't come here to insult you. I'm here for business, not pleasure. Well, John, nice meeting you. I'll go give Boots his lunch. Have you seen him anywhere? Yes, he was lying on the front lawn cleaning himself. You have a new boyfriend, Joyce? Boots isn't anybody's boyfriend. He's been fixed. And he's a lot friendlier since. Maybe you ought to try it. I see you're still opening your doors to every helpless stray that comes along. I can't help it. I like cats. I was talking about Mitzi. <laughs> Mitzi moved in about a year ago. I met her at the unemployment office. She used to work there until they laid her off. <laughs> After you left, I felt the need to have another human being around. Come to think of it, I also felt that way while you were here. <laughs> As I was saying, I'm here on business. I understand CBS has given you the lead in the undercover woman pilot. Yes. Isn't that great? Just think, after so many years of battling to get somewhere in this business, at last, I know the thrill of victory. They've asked me to direct it. And the agony of defeat. The point is, we're only going to be working together for two weeks. If the pilot sells, I'll have nothing to do with the series. So I'd like to suggest that for those two weeks, we put our personal feelings to one side and work together as professionals. I've always had the greatest respect for you as a director. It's only as a person I despise you. <laughs> and if I may reply in kind, your father wears pantyhose. <laughs> Now that we've both gotten the venom out of our systems, can we agree to call a truce for the next two weeks? I will if you will. Good. No more insults. No more insults. No more snide remarks about my mustache. And I promise I won't say anything more about your mustache. Good. And I won't say anything about yours. <laughs> Good morning, Joyce. Good morning, John. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yes, and what a nice studio. That's a nice outfit. <laughs> and a nice mustache. <laughs> Two more weeks of this bull. Excellent, Joyce. You think you can keep it up? I can if you can. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> this is Fletcher Huff, who will play the police chief. How do you do? This is Hugo Muncy. Oh, we work Joyce. together. Hi. Hugo you? will dress like you and be your stunt double. And uh, this is uh, Lisa Vincent. Oh, this is such a thrill working with you, Miss Whitman. I've admired you for years. Well, thank you. And years. Very much. <laughs> it was just brilliant of you to cast her in this part. I mean, it would have been so easy to do what Charlie's Angels and Police Women and all those other hit shows did. What's that, dear? Oh, you know, hire someone gorgeous and voluptuous, sexy and young. I mean, finally, television has come out with the star that the middle-aged, frumpy housewife can identify with. <laughs> okay, folks, let's uh, go to work. We'll all have Excuse me, John. 
Sorry, I'm late. My car broke down. Well, that's okay. These things happen no matter who you are. Who are you? I'm sorry. Uh, Doug Porterfield. The CBS has assigned me as the liaison to your show. Well, actually, my official title is vice president in charge of prime time dramatic development. Sounds like a very important job. It sure seems that way to me. Yesterday, I was working in the mailroom. <laughs> so you see, this is a real thrill for me, being my first network assignment. Oh, yes, the first time is always special. <laughs> what a memory you have. Okay, um, let's... Uh... Let's take it from the top. Fade in, Metropolitan Police Station, night. Chief is talking to two policewomen. Okay, you two. Now, you listen and listen good. If you mess up this assignment, I'm going to hang you out to dry. Is, is that too hard, John? <laughs> Fletcher, you did him just fine. Do him exactly the way you did before. Now, please, go on. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Whatever you say, John. Okay, you two. Now, listen and listen good. If you mess up this assignment, I'm going to hang you out to dry. Is that the way I did it before, John? <laughs> That's the way. Now, uh, if we can get on with the reading. Uh, but uh, first, before we do, I, I'd like to say something that I should have said earlier. I think we have a good shot with this pilot. We have a good script and a terrific cast. And most important of all, we have a very special and gifted leading lady. I don't know what it is that makes a star. Talent, energy, drive, whatever. But whatever it is, she's got it. Yeah. Bravo. Well, thank you, John. That was very nice. I don't mean nice. I mean nice. Well, I mean it, Joyce. I think you have the makings of a fabulous undercover woman. Too bad you never told me that when we were married. <laughs> Joyce, are you sure you only invited John over this evening to talk about problems in the show? Certainly, dear. It's strictly business. Yeah, monkey business. Oh, come on. Listen, one more time, will you go over those lines for that scene we're shooting in the morning? Oh, come on, Joyce, level with me. You didn't just invite John over to talk about the show. What's going on? Well, to tell you the truth, for the past week, things have really been going very well on the set. And not just with the show. I had forgotten how charming and considerate and sweet John can be. If you cared for him, why did you divorce him? Oh, who can say why a marriage breaks down? I can. That man didn't have one iota of human warmth in him. Do you know, in five years of marriage, I never could get him to say, I love you? The most romantic thing he ever said was, am I too heavy? <laughs> was when I carried him over the threshold. <laughs> Trying to get through to that man was the most frustrating, exasperating experience of my life. What makes you think you can get through to him now? Well, we're both different now. More mature, more understanding. I mean, what did we know when we got married? We were just a couple of silly kids. I was 40, he was 42. Mitzi, how many times do I have to tell you, don't stand flowers in ice water? Hi. Hi. Come on in. Hello, Mitzi. Hello, John. Nice to see you again. If you'll excuse me, I have to go clip Herman's nails. I have scratch marks all over my body. Bye-bye. I suppose Herman is another cat. No, Herman's her boyfriend. Can I fix you something to drink? Uh, no, thank you. I don't like to drink when I work. Now, what exactly was it in the last scene that you didn't like? 
Well, um, I'm a little confused. What is my motivation in the car chase? Well, I always thought it was to avoid getting machine gunned to death. <laughs> but why don't we sit down and talk about it? Wonderful. Now, on page 43, you'll notice the same car has been in your rearview mirror since Buffalo. <laughs> The police chief can't trace you because the homing device he's fastened underneath your car only has a radius. John, I kissed you. I thought it was you. John, I didn't invite you over here to talk about the script, and you know it. That isn't why I put on this dress and made a fabulous candlelit dinner and placed this flower here. I was hoping it was just growing there. <laughs> John, tonight we are going to talk to each other. The way we never talked in five years of marriage. We're going to talk about how we feel about life and about love and and about each other. We're gonna find out where we went wrong and whether there's any way we could make it work again. You're not leaving here until you open your heart to me. So you might as well take off your shoes and pour yourself a drink and make yourself comfortable. We may be spending the night together. What do you say to that? Well, it's all right with me. I just don't know how my wife will feel about it. It's going to take a little longer to light the next scene than we thought, so we won't need anybody for a half hour. Uh, except Joyce. We can uh, walk through the next scene, and I can show you how all the props work. I'll wait for you in the trailer. Okay, man. Now, I want to go over this very carefully, Joyce, because we don't have replacements for some of these breakaway props, and we have to get it right on the first take. Now, uh, when Wing Fat's henchmen start coming at you, you'll be standing here by the dragon. You hit the first henchman over the head with this vase. The second henchman will come at you from behind. As he lunges, you duck, then smash him with the bust. Uh, Buddha's not yours. <laughs> After all, we don't want to kill him. <laughs> when Wing Fat comes out of the back John, room, before we go on, I, uh, I'd like to apologize for last night. I hadn't heard you had remarried, or I never would have behaved as I did. There's no need to apologize, Joyce. The truth of the matter is, I'm not married. I beg your pardon. I sensed we were heading for one of those emotional scenes that can be so embarrassing for everyone involved. At the time, it seemed the easiest way out. You mean you lied to me? You let me pour my guts out and then made a complete jackass of me? Crushing me, humiliating me, destroying me? Yes, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Look, Joyce, you know the sort of person I am. Displays of emotion make me feel very un uncomfortable. And I do whatever is necessary to avoid them. Let's just leave it at that and get on with the show. Fine. You're absolutely right. We have a show to do. That must come first. Good. Uh, now, let me get this straight. Uh, which was the breakaway prop you did not have a replacement for? Uh, was this the one? <laughs> Yes, that was the one, Joyce. Oh, and I guess you also want me to be very careful not to break this right now, too. Indeed. Hold on, please. Yes, I would be furious if you broke that. What about this chair? No, you don't have to worry about that. We have other breakaway chairs. However, that wasn't one of them. Well, fine. 
and I think I have the feel of the scene. Uh, you let me know when you're ready for me. Hi, Fletcher. I didn't know you were having a party, Joyce. Well, CBS is looking at the pilot this afternoon, and then Doug is going to come over and let us know whether they're going to make it into a series. I just thought it'd be more fun if we all waited for the news together. You mean the future of everybody in this room depends on what Doug says when he walks through the door? That's right. How can you all stay so calm? Well, we're all show people in this room, Mitzi. I mean, we've been through too much to get excited over one more acceptance or rejection. <laughs> Oh, John. You're late. Were you combing your face? No, I stopped to get something to eat. I cooked. I know. <laughs> Any news from the network? No, we're still waiting to hear from Doug. Well, you know, Joyce, I think it's a credit to both of us that we've managed to get through these two weeks without totally destroying each other. I'd like you to know that I've had worse experiences. Oh, really? The Bataan Death March comes to mind. <laughs> yes, I was always so sorry you didn't survive that. <laughs> Doug. Hi, Joyce. Can we make it? Oh, you yeah, sure? Wait a minute. Well, 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 all this top brass from New York flew out here today. And they all sat down and watched the pilot together. Well, what did they say? They said it was lurid, tasteless, cheap, ludicrous, far-fetched, and only suitable for someone with the mentality of an eight-year-old. They loved it! <laughs> they only wish they had 20 more like it! Oh, 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 so happy for you. Oh, I can't. And the best part is once you start working on the series, you won't have to see John every day. You'll have other directors. There'll be no more fights, no more arguments, no more insults, no more John. Isn't that just wonderful? Wonderful. I knew you'd be pleased. <laughs> Come on, everybody. The food's out on the patio. Help yourselves. Oh, I know. John, uh, this isn't easy for me to say, but I think you did an excellent job directing the pilot. Well, this isn't easy for me to say either, but I think I did too. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'd be very happy if you'd stay with the show. Well, I'd like that myself, Joyce. But you'd have to realize that if I did, things wouldn't be any different than they've been these past weeks. I wouldn't be any different. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to become a warm, emotional person all of a sudden. I'm going to be the same... Cold fish? Thank you. The same cold fish I've always been. Could you accept that? I'm willing to try. Excuse me. Hugo, you don't have to do that socially. Oh, I know. I did it just to make you laugh. Besides, it's Ladies' Day at the car wash. <laughs> Hugo, I've got great news. Hmm. They bought the pilot. Hey, that's terrific. Congratulations. <laughs> oh. Come on, everybody's outside. Help yourself. Oh, what can I get you to drink? A beer. Yeah. Great. They're all out on the patio. John, you shaved your mustache. Did I? You shaved it off. That mustache you've had ever since you were... Six. You 
know I always hated that mustache. You did that for me. To show me you really do feel something. You really do care. You know something? What? I liked you better with the mustache. <laughs> then I have done the right thing. <laughs> <laughs>